Time for 5.30. I'll call this meeting of the First City Commission to order. Commissioner Monica Mernan is not in attendance tonight. She'll be joining us by phone. We stand for the invocation given by Bishop Walderson, <coughs> Lighthouse Attendant. <coughs> Our Father God, we thank you today for your blessings upon us. We ask you to bless our commission, the shepherds of our community. We ask that, oh God, that you would give them the patience of Job and the wisdom of Solomon. We ask you to bless everyone that come before you today in business. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> the question we have over here tonight is public input. Is there anyone out there that would like to come forward, state their name and address, and speak on any subject they care to? Seeing none, I close the public input. Or move to consent agenda. <coughs> Are there any items to be removed for discussion? Or none. Uh, roll call vote. Move to approve. A second. Gray. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ketterman. Aye. Munsell. Aye. Mernan. Aye. We've scheduled a public hearing tonight uh, to 2015 budget amendment. The city advertised for a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, December 8, 2015 at 5.30 p.m. in the city commission room located in law enforcement center located at 201 North Pine to hear any, and answer, hear any questions and answer objections of taxpayers related to the proposed amending amendment using funds in the 2015 budget. I, James. Mayor, City Commissioners, uh, uh, I mentioned this a couple meetings ago that I'd be bringing some budget amendments that you're in uh, on three of our funds, and that's uh, what this is about. Now, it's like you're in bookkeeping, uh, clean up so we don't have any bu state budget violations. Uh, we had uh, three funds, the Debt Service Fund, Special Parks and Recreation Fund, and the Section 8 Housing Fund. Uh, the debt service fund is because we did some uh, bond refinancing where it increased the expenditures and revenues, but the, the budget goes by the expenditure side, so it was more than what we had originally adopted. Uh, so I had to raise that to, to allow for that. Uh, the special uh, parks and recreation is due to increased revenue on the liquor tax that, that was received over what was estimated. It was more than what the state had estimated we were going to get this year. So I had to raise that, too, because that all gets expanded out. Uh, and the Section 8 housing fund needs to be raised because we've actually leased up more houses this year uh, in the town. Uh, so it was more than what we anticipated when we started the year with. Uh, so you just need to open this up to a public hearing. And then uh, if there's no comments or anything, you close the public hearing and then uh, vote to approve as amended. Well, I open this portion up to hear and answer any <coughs> objections to this uh, budget amendment from the public. Anybody would like to come forward and say their name and address and any, any objections they have. Seeing none, I close the public input. And is there a motion to approve this amendment? So moved. I'll second. And moved and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same time. Thank you, Jamie. John Jamie. We have a special presentation presentation tonight. Girl Scout Project. Terry Blessant will explain the 2015 Girl Scout Service Project that benefited the city of Pittsburgh by adding three benches made out of recycled lids to various locations around the city. Mayor Commissioners, thank you for giving us this opportunity to bring Terry Blessant and these uh, fifth and sixth grade Girl Scouts to you to, sh to explain the project, service project that they, they did for our community. They spend a lot of time on this project, and uh, hopefully it's something that they can continue in the future, but we're just very proud of the work they did, so I'm going to turn it over to Terry to talk to you about it. Hi, I'm Terry Blessant, and I am the troop leader of Troop 61018 here in Pittsburgh, Kansas. 
We started this project back in August of 2014. Thought we would gather some unrecyclable caps, plastic caps and lids, send them to Evansville, Indiana and get a bench. We needed 400 pounds for one bench. So we thought, we'll do one. And we started, when we started, we thought, you know, it'll take us a long time to get 400 pounds. So we started and we had 400 pounds in not very long of a time period. So we decided to keep going. We stopped at three benches because we were out of room and overwhelmed. <laughs> so here is, we had to wash the caps before we could actually take them. So here's just a few pictures of the girls washing the caps. It was a long process. Some of the people would wash them, some of them not so much. Just here's another picture of some more washing. This here, somebody graciously donated their enclosed trailer for us to travel with these caps. We went to Evansville, Indiana with them. Five girls went with us. Here we are unloading them in Evansville. The girls helped. It was pouring down rain. They didn't care. They got out there anyways. So here are the five girls that went. The two gentlemen are the two from the company in Evansville, and then the benches up on the top right are the ones that we actually brought home. Here is the park at Schlanger, which is where we would like to put, I'm assuming since there's a pad now, we are definitely going to put one there. <laughs> um, the second one, we're unsure of exactly where, but then the third one, Harvey Dean actually came, the girls went to Harvey, he was looking to place a bench with his coal buckets and his football, so he decided that he would like to partner with us. So he paid for his bench that we will place here. Um, do you have any questions? Would you like me to introduce you? <laughs> should introduce sure. the girls. This is Ellie Clutter, Beth Blessant, Catherine Kirby, Paige Kirby, and Grace Cunningham. <clears throat> well, I'd just like to thank you for all the hard work you girls did in providing something that's going to benefit and really, truly beautiful project, taking trash heavy, well, and turning it into something useful. So thank you for your hard work. Yes, thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. I've got, a, I've got oh. another cap here oh. if you want to show it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody go get it. <laughs> Yeah, do you have any other projects planned? <laughs> um, at this point, we do not. Uh, we want to get this one completely finished first before we... This is just the beginning of the girls' projects. They will have... This is called the Bronze Award for them. They have to do a project that serves the community, and this definitely will serve the community, I believe. I mean, they will... People take their kids to the park all the time. They'll have a place to sit. But we don't really have another one in mind yet. Well, benches are expensive, so on behalf of all the taxpayers, thank you because they're critical. And uh, we can use as many of them we can get, and those are beautiful benches, so great job. Thank yes, thank you very thank much, you. girls. Thank you. Consider the following. A, an ordinance number G1243. Consider approving the ordinance number B1242, creating Article 5, Section 62-51 or 62-156, and then Chapter 62 of the Pittsburgh City Code for the purpose of creating a downtown advisory board and determining, <coughs> determining the membership due, duties and functions of said downtown advisory board. Yes. Mayor and Commissioners, I'm here representing the downtown district asking you for, for your approval of this ordinance. The ordinance, as you said, would create a downtown advisory board, and I'll just hit some of the highlights. It would be a seven-member board. One member would represent the hospitality industry. One would represent the retail industry. One would be a property owner. And one would, would represent... Um, 
with, uh, and the downtown district. One would, would live in the downtown district. And the other three would be members at large that, are, that have a vested interest in the downtown district. Uh, we set the terms. Uh, the at-large members would serve one term. The four other members would serve a two-year term, and then they would rotate off. Um, there would be an, an appointment of a chairperson and obviously a vice chair. With the city manager's approval, I would serve as his designee as an ex-officio member of the board and take care of the minutes. No member would serve more than a three-year term. The duties of the advisory board would be to represent the interests of the downtown property owners, residents, and merchants, and they'll establish committees as they see necessary to work in the downtown area. The board would meet at least quarterly, if not, if not more often if needed, and the downtown advisory board would present an annual report in March of what's gone on for the year, and they would present that at a work session with the commissioners. I would like to thank the downtown committee for their input. This has been a process that's been going on for a few months now, um, and I think we've, we've pretty much got it ironed out the way we think it would work best for the city. I would like to thank uh, for the city and the downtown. I would like to thank Jay, Jay Byers, Kim Vogel, and city attorney Henry McGinney for their work on the ordinance. Uh, hopefully after it's approved this evening, it will be printed in the newspaper on Friday. And then we've devised a application for the members and we would present that to those that are interested. And they would have until January the 4th to apply for a board position, get those to Tammy, and then we would bring it back to you for your vote on however many that we might receive. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if I've for those who might be for those who might be watching, what is the what is the expanded role of this group going to be versus the other committees and the other groups that have been formed from a downtown perspective? Well, this will be this will be the group. D City's right. advisory board. We've had um, in the past few months we've had different committees that have worked together on different projects. We've had an infrastructure committee, we've had a marketing committee, an events committee. Those will will hopefully work into the, well. I know they will work into this, but this advisory board will determine what committees need to be chosen that will best direct the downtown. And I would assume a lot of those that I mentioned will continue. Uh, one thing I did mention, it, one board member will be responsible for each of the committees. So hopefully it will be an ongoing effort, uh, or will be an ongoing effort to help, you know, bring new ideas into the downtown and, and kind of get all the downtown merchants, you know, working together. And we think this is something that's been needed and we would ask for your for your approval. Okay, so this would be similar to like the airport advisory board. Correct. From a, well, from a practical standpoint. Well, I'm not sure the functions of the airport board, but. No, it, Commissioner Gray is Mark. exactly right. I mean, that's, I guess his question is probably similar to what I think maybe I'm thinking. Can you take a minute, and, and you may need Jay's help, I don't know. And let's talk about, just recap for everybody, there's been a lot in the last year and a half as far as noise ordinances, overlay districts, um, just kind of lay it out. I mean, who, so there's a, is this board going to oversee everything? How's the overlay district work in? We've got you as a downtown coordinator. I mean, we've had a pretty significant effort to get organized downtown. Maybe lay, isn't this the, miss, the final piece? Yes, is actually yes, it is. And body. I think my question was, was just related almost more than just for structural purposes because I think there's been many downtown groups, and maybe many is exaggerating, but there's right. been several downtown groups over the years that have been formed and gone away or reformed. And, and so just for those who might be watching, I just wanted to make sure that it was clear what this board would be, who it, re who it would replace, and what its function would be is more what I, but there, you are correct, there's been a lot of changes over the last year and a half. So I don't know if you could summarize that for those who might well, be watching. Well, I mean, to answer your question, Commissioner Gray, what it would replace really is, is what necessarily, what's been working, but we've, we've felt for a long time until we're a recognized board with the city, um, we don't feel like we're going anywhere. We, we, we've had committees that, that work um, in conjunction with the downtown in marketing and in, in event planning, but we really felt like a structure, we needed to, to be a board recognized by the city to be able to make, if, if there are changes in the downtown, obviously there's some issues with some buildings downtown. I know there'll be an infrastructure committee which will really look on, on how we can keep 
the facades the way they are, keep the historic part of the downtown, you know, uh, going the way it is. What we did about a year ago was pass the, the ordinance, that, the overlay ordinance, so it really gave us a direction of the size of the downtown district. It goes from 14th Street to Rouse, one block to the west and two blocks to the east. So now we have a, a defined area of what the downtown district is, and this really, in my mind, is the final piece to where we can begin to get organized, get committees together, and start functioning to, to improve different areas of the downtown. Now, I don't know if that's, if that's answered your question. No, or no, no. I think, I think it provides the explanation I'm looking for. I mean, I, I, I kind of already knew the, the background, but I just wanted to make sure that, that folks at home aren't confused about, oh, it's just another downtown group. It's more than that. This will that's be what, the, that's what I'm this will to, be the to downtown the group. Across. This right. seven member board uh, with, with the different, uh, we, it just couldn't be all seven people at large. We wanted a retail person. We wanted a property owner downtown. We wanted someone that lives downtown. And then we wanted someone from the hospitality industry so, uh, so we could all work together to make downtown what we'd like it to be. I appreciate it. Just a question on terms, one and two year terms. Well, the, the at large members will serve a one year term. The other members will serve a two year term. After the one year term for the at large members rolls off, then they will be re reappointed to a two year term. And, but you can only serve three consecutive two year terms. Okay, that's the question. Is, yes. I don't want to run so out, you can't I be don't on run out of people. And work. We, we, <laughs> want, we want a changeover. Okay. We want people to you know have the opportunity to serve so and, and of course if someone for one whatever reason you know wouldn't be able to fulfill their term we come back to you and suggest appointees okay thank you good stuff good explanation any further questions <clears throat> do you have any people in mind to be on the committee yet or is it too early to uh, no i think there's there's been a core group of people that have really helped me with the downtown district and and i would assume and i'm I don't want to give you their names, but I would assume a lot of those people would be interested in, in being a, a member because they have been there from the beginning since I've been on board, and I think they would want to continue that and feel like they are, now they have some real, some real input that they can give um, to the group. Sort of as a follow-up to Michael's question, um, you had mentioned the infrastructure thing kind of being on your radar for the future. Are there any other sorts of things that like the group has kind of come up with preliminarily that they're thinking about? Uh, you know, I think marketing the downtown is, is, one, is, is one item that I know people are interested in, also events downtown. And events downtown don't necessarily need to be on Broadway. Uh, events downtown can be on Pine Street, can be, you know, so we're not having to maybe continually block off the downtown area. Uh, but there's, there's a lot, there are several people that are interested in, in different events downtown that can help bring people into the downtown district. There's, I'll just yeah. step in here. Uh, there are a couple of benefits to having an organized group, a recognized organized group that's been recognized by the commission. Uh, they, they're eligible for more grant funds. We're, at, we're more likely to get grant funds potentially. We're looking at grant funds for, for planning, for general planning for the, for the downtown area, redevelopment, potential redevelopment grants. Um, so, and historic preservation grants, a lot of those things that we're more likely to get with an, or, with an organized group. So there's, there's definitely those, those pieces. We're also looking at taking that downtown overlay and identifying particular areas within that downtown as venues for activities. Like, uh, the, obviously, Europe Park is a good example of that. That's a good example of a, of a venue that we could identify. And, and if, we, if people come to us with uh, suggestions for activities, we can say, well, we have these venues downtown, and based on the kind of activity they're looking for, perhaps we could identify a particular venue for that activity. Say, well, what you're, in other words, what you're, what you're talking about or planning looks like it fit really well in the Pritchett Pavilion, for example, and we can kind of or organize it better that way. That way, we can, when, when we need to provide resources to support that activity, we'd already have a plan. You know, it's not ad hoc every time. You know, we know if we're going to have an event at, uh, at, at Pritchett Pavilion, we need this, 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 and this, all right? And that plan could just be executed without a whole lot of re reinventing the wheel every time. So these are just some of the things that, that, that having a more organized group allows us to do. I might, I might, Mayor, I might just add one thing. We, we applied for the Smart Growth Grant. 
Uh, we were one of the one of seven out of 68, I think, mm -hmm. that had applied for it. Mm -hmm. We received a phone call. We had a meeting, uh, but unfortunately, we were informed last week that we didn't receive it. The good thing is they're applying for additional money in 2016, and they asked us to be patient because they really appreciated the application that we sent in and felt like, and, and they said we were on their short list. So they said uh, be patient, and hopefully in 2016 they would be able to, to maybe come on and help us with, the, with that grant. That's a planning that grant. Planning grant. That was for all cities in the United States. Wasn't yes. It? But that's, yes. That's pretty good to be on that short list. <coughs> well, no other questions or comments. I'll move to approve. I'll second. second. Then we move and second them. All in favor of approving the ordinance, say aye. 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 Thank you. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Link resurfacing pro project. <coughs> the Kansas Department of Transportation has announced approval of funding for the Plank Resurfacing Project on K-126 4th Street and KCS Overpass East 13 Highway for fiscal year 2017 based on an estimate for the total project cost of $610,340 with the state's participation being 50% of the actual total participating project cost. Cameron. Uh, this is a similar type project to what we had just uh, completed this year, uh, running from the bypass up uh, to Pine Street. This would take it fr uh, from the overpass uh, out east to Freaking Highway. Questions for Cameron? I don't have any. I'll move to approve. Second. Move to second to approve. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say Motion Thank you. Phone system upgrade. Staff is requesting authorization to accept the quote submitted by Xander Open System, ASO, in the amount of $98,712.69 to upgrade the city's telephone system. Yes. Uh, Mayor Commissioners, um, we purchased the current phone system that the city uses. City, this is a citywide telephone system. We, we installed it in 2007. Uh, we have since then um, not uh, it, um, upgraded the system or maintained the licensing for it um, as a cost-saving measure that was done. Um, what that means is that if we have a problem with it or something goes wrong, um, we, uh, we cannot call the company to help us fix that, all right? Um, now, you know, obviously the staff here has been maintaining it and, and, and we've been able to keep it up and running, um, but it is a... Um, uh, it, it, we run into numerous scares that, you know, we obviously still need a telephone system. We're, we're not beyond that uh, yet. We may, we may have some options in the future, but right now we, have, we need a phone system for a, a num almost everything we do. So it's, um, this is something that we've been kind of identified. Some, we identified this several years ago. We've been trying to put aside some money for it and identify funds for it. This is an unbudgeted item, which is why we brought it up on the, on the consider agenda here. Uh, but we, we feel we have enough resources now. Uh, we we pared down the uh, the contract to what we what we need. Uh, this con this uh, particular contract will provide uh, software to upgrade all of the licenses we have. We'll provide for some equipment, some switches switches and routers and things behind the scene we need, as well as services to to upgrade. There's some process that you have to go through. You have to upgrade all of the switches. It, there's a whole pretty involved process you have to go through to upgrade your telephone system and that's what that's what all of the all of this is for it's not provide it's not actually buying any additional telephones right the telephones we have now uh, will actually work with with the with the upgraded system but there's some things that we haven't been able to do because we haven't been able to upgrade anything we haven't been able to add any services um, we've been running out of voicemail boxes so um, we've actually you know when when a new person comes on and they, we need an additional voicemail box we actually have to remove someone or put them in a group that's kind of what we've been doing. So this will take care of all of those kind of shortcomings. So that's, that's what this is. But what is, the, uh, mm -hmm. what is the plan going forward so we don't end up another seven, eight years down the road with no upgrades? I mean, these, are these, we looking at what the long-term <coughs> solution is for that? Um, well, the, the solution is to budget and, and add and include license upgrades in the future. What, what's in front of you are, provides for three years' worth of licensing. Okay. okay. Um, at that point, we're really going to have to start, after that three-year period, we'll have to start looking at 
do we want to change out some more equipment? We'll, we'll reevaluate uh, the phone system at that time. This is going to be good for three years. And, uh, and after that, we will add budgetary item to maintain the license. Did you bid this out, Jay, or could you explain? No, that? this is um, this is actually bid, uh, purchased off of a state contract. Um, uh, Alexander Open Systems works through the state. Uh, there, it's uh, there. Th this is Cisco equipment. <coughs> Cisco has a contract with the state of, of, of Kansas, and we uh, we can buy off that. It's it's all bid out uh, as, as all the state contracts are for these sorts of things, and so we can be guaranteed we're getting a, a, a good bid rate on all of these, all equipment and services. So is this a continuation then of the existing service that we had like it's simply an upgrade to the present system it, it, that's exact exactly okay. yes it would be considerably more expensive if we replaced it <laughs> so. do we have any idea what it's going to cost in three years to budget what's necessary to keep it from falling into this state again um, I think it'll probably be uh, in the nature of twenty thousand right? dollars just a normal mm -hmm. percentage license upgrade for software that's every three years? That'll uh, be every year. That'll be every year. That'll be every year. That, at that point, it'll be every year. Um, I have to go back and I can't, it's hard to me to estimate what it's going to be in three years. But, but, but that's, a, that's the neighborhood. That's three years away. We're also going to be buying phones, like but, but with current budget money, we'll be buying new phones. We won't, you know, that won't be addition. That'll be additional expense. The three year licensing fee, does that cover the maintenance and stuff? That it does. Along it with? does. And, and the key being, we can call somebody and say, <laughs> We're having a problem, and they'll get online with us and fix it. When do you plan on, if this is approved, to uh, get this fixed? Um, well, January, we'll start, and uh, I think it's a six. Did we say about six weeks? Yeah, it'll be about a six week. Mm -hmm. The project mm -hmm. runtime is about six weeks mm -hmm. of uh, technician from AOS and other skilled uh, vendors coming on site. So the whole process takes about six weeks, about three weeks worth of pre-planning scheduling before that so we're looking completion date by Valentine's Day but we ought to be starting in January and realize every building we have that has phone service has to have a separate switch and that has to be programmed and, that, and that's how we do the night that's how 911 works that so when you make a call they that the desk here knows where you're calling from so all of those have to be programmed with the 911 system so it's a little bit involved the processes multiple locations no new numbers. Oh, no, no. no. There's, there are going to be physically no changes for the for The, the citizens, users. nothing will change on there. No, no, like. thanks, thanks. No, 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 no changes for the citizens. It's just behind the scenes stuff like most of the stuff I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any further questions for Jay? No. No? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Are there any non-agenda reports or requests? We just have one, I believe. Cameron? <coughs> Thank you. I just wanted, uh, again, to invite the commission out to a ribbon-cutting ceremony out on Quincy Street this Thursday, December 10th at 9 a.m. Uh, we'll be uh, parking folks over at the uh, Pizza Hut there beside there. We've got some accommodations for overflow parking on the closed portion of Quincy. Uh, we'll be setting up a uh, stage there and uh, the general uh, public will kind of congregate there right in front of the railroad crossing there in the closed portion of Quincy. Quincy itself will be closed between Broadway and the railroad tracks and we'll uh, start putting traffic control out prior to that probably about seven eight o'clock start getting that rolled out but definitely uh, invite the commission and invite uh, any of the public and media that would like to attend. That's at 9, right, Cameron? Yes, 9 a.m. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I have one thing. I would like to uh, recommend city staff to, to provide any assistance to the county if they pursue a countersuit against Cherokee County regarding the casino. Do we need... What do you mean by that, Chuck? Do we need three people to vote on that? Or? No, I, well, you know, I if they, they ask for something from the city uh, on their counter suit, then that's a possibility. Mm -hmm. Anything they ask us to do. What if they're asking us to join it? I'd just soon get 
commission approval to move. Well, I think, do we have, uh, what kind of grounds would we have for the lawsuit well, anyway? Is, is this something that we can oh. discuss in an executive session? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. That would go. be my preference. Yes. So we will, we we will if it comes up, it. we will schedule an executive session and we will, we will be helpful and we will bring it to you and we will discuss yeah, it. Yeah, we have no idea if this is going to happen or not with the county, but uh, I would. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll move. Second. Oh, that's just like the dog in front of the log. Don't call me. Well, no, I guess you did.